Cool. Um, thanks so much for everybody um, joining. I'd love if you can all just go around and um, introduce a little, like introduce yourselves and tell our uh, audience a little bit about what you do at GitLab. Um, I'll start. My name is Emily. I do mostly content and social marketing on our growth team. Um, I'm kind of an interloper here among our, our data team on the call. I'll jump in next. I'm Emily. I'm the data analyst on the data and analytics team. And I'm Thomas. I'm the data engineer on the data and analytics team. I'm Taylor. I'm the manager of the data and analytics team. And I'm uh, Jacob. I'm a uh, staff engineer on the um, Meltano team uh, slash lead on the team. And Josh Lambert, uh, product manager for the Meltano team. And Chase Wright, FPNA lead uh, on the finance team. Cool, awesome to have all these different perspectives here. Um, so this might be a question for Jacob or, and or Joshua. I just love if you could share a little bit about what Meltano is um, at sort of a high level and then we'll get more into the details uh, later. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so Meltano is uh, aimed to be a complete solution for um, data scientists, data analytics people, um, anybody who's um, using data. And so, um, you know, the complete Meltano actually stands for something where you have Meltano, um, Meltano model, extract, load, transform, analyze, notebook, and orchestrate. Um, so you're taking the complete uh, life cycle uh, of the data and you're doing it all in one tool. Um, and so where you're modeling it with uh, DBT, you're extracting it with our own custom extractors and um, you're doing this all from uh, one step to the next to, to get the whole picture and to make it easy and all kind of in one package, if that makes sense. Awesome. So maybe if viewers are familiar with GitLab, I read um, in your readme that uh, Meltano is like the full data science lifecycle and GitLab is the full like, DevOps lifecycle. So that's kind of an analogous way. Um, exactly, yeah. And, and, and that, that, that's the, the parallel. Um, and rather than uh, currently the plan is not to wrap it directly into GitLab, um, but to make it a similar thing to GitLab where it is the complete package here and um, GitLab is the complete package for uh, software engineers. Very cool. And so I think um, the relationship between like all the people on this call is, I think if I understand correctly, the, um, the data team are sort of like the main customers right now for the Meltano team, but eventually you want Meltano to be a fit for like marketers and people ops. I think I saw an example in your functional group update about people ops using Meltano to like see how long it takes to get from a resume to hiring someone. Um, so could you like, and I think you eventually want to be able to replace Salesforce and Marketo for those types of, for marketing users. Um, is that, is that accurate? Um, can you talk more about the future kind of scope? Yeah. So scope wise, you know, this is also very open ended because we really just started to, kind of uh, figure out uh, where we're headed. Um, but right now, um, if you take, a, just from a very basic standpoint, if you take a, a data source like uh, Lever, which is something that our, our recruiters have, and they wanna figure out the answer to a problem, like how long does it take to get from resume to hire, um, first you need to extract that data out of Lever, so you can extract that data out of Lever with our extractors, and then you need to load it into a data warehouse. You need to transform it with DBT. And you can do all this uh, potentially through a user interface. Uh, you can potentially automate all this. And then once you write um, the uh, melt files, which will allow you to visualize all that data, uh, you're going to be able to actually see the answer to your question in charts and um, in tables and actual answers to your questions um, where, you know, before it was like SQL queries and um, raw data that gets transformed into actual visual things that could uh, even be dashboards that go on um, some sort of leader's um, uh, screen in their office, you know. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. So now I guess um, enough of putting Jacob on the spot. I'd love to just uh, open it up to everyone if you want to talk a little bit about, um, or the data team, if you'd like to talk a little bit about how you're using it right now and how maybe that's informing um, the development of it going forward or anything else you want to share. Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in here. Um, so as a uh, data and analytics team, um, our kind of charge is to set up a data warehouse, pull in all of the data from all these external sources and then present it in a usable ma manner for business users to, to gain insights um, from, from all that data. And then long term, it's to uh, be able to make predictions based off that data and saying, okay, there's a trend in our sales or marketing or whatever. Um, why is that happening? And we can start running experiments and getting that feedback loop. And that's, that's kind of where the, the data science aspect comes in of saying, okay, we're going to make a prediction by changing this lever. Um, and we have the data to track it and measure it um, and to understand the effects of, of the changes that we're making. Um, and so our relationship to Meltano is basically the same. Um, you know, we're, we're going from, from zero to one here. And so um, kind of when I came in, there was some, some basic, uh, there was some, like, uh, some of the groundwork was already laid, um, but w there was a long way to go and, and still is. And so it's, it's been about getting um, data from external uh, sources. So Salesforce, Marketo, Lieber, um, all these uh, different extractors together, um, moving it into our data warehouse. And then we use a, a transformation step and we use a tool called DBT to kind of model the data. Um, and then right now we're using a tool called Looker to, to visualize it. Um, but in an ideal world, um, all of that would be done via like open source tooling. Everything would be version controlled. Um, you'd be able to, to understand and track the state of your entire analytics pipeline from raw data to, to visualization um, completely, you know, within a Git tree history, essentially. Um, and so that's, that's what got me excited about coming to GitLab is basically saying, well, GitLab's awesome at DevOps. Data people are terrible at, at DevOps practices. Um, we're like 15 years behind uh, where software engineering is, I, I think. Uh, and that's, that's kind of why I was super excited to, to join GitLab was to kind of bring the best of DevOps to data and analytics. That's awesome. And you think that's like a, it sounds like that's a really common thing. Like your peers who are data scientists or data ops people, would, would they hear that and be like, ugh, like, yes, it's like really nice now that there's a solution for that. I think so. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, there's, we're attacking a lot of the kind of business operations uh, side of the, the data and um, analytics and data science world. Um, there's a lot of other data sources, um, larger scale, different, different kinds of, of questions. Um, but I, I think we're trying to uh, come up with the, the right sort of primitives uh, for the, the field um, in, in terms of how to think about the, the data problems, how to structure the tooling um, so that we can get some collaboration from, from other people saying, hey, like, we're going in this direction. How are you use, using this? What are your data problems? This is, you know, these are the problems that GitLab has, but we want to make this tool useful for a lot of people. And we're just taking whatever they say because, you know, they are the data experts and, you know, we are the software development experts. And so um, we're trying to merge those two ideas and just bring uh, the two, you know, the best practices of the software development world into the uh, data analytics world. And so, like, lots of really great feedback from them uh, to say, like, this is what we really need and this is what the tool should have and this is the current problems that we have and this is how we can solve it. And, and it's great for them because we build whatever they want. That's so cool. Um, are you um, on, like, have you iterated several versions already based on their feedback? Or can you fill us in on, like, kind of how the development's going and what that feedback loop looks like? Or can you give any examples of things that they asked for? I mean, so, so I think in the beginning, it's um, just catching up. It's like we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of data sources that we needed to create extractors for, and we were just like heads down creating a lot of different extractors. So we've created ones for Lever and NetSuite and Salesforce, and each one of those is like a major uh, undertaking. And, and the other thing is it's also a blank canvas. And so now we've identified like, this is how we're going to make extractors, and we're gonna separate the extract part from the loading part, and we have like a clear definition um, but you know, right from the beginning, we didn't always have that clear definition. And now we have like a really, uh, a really solid way of building these extractors. And so 
while we were heads down for a while, now we have, I think, six or seven different extractors uh, that we can pull from. And now we're putting that all together into like one kind of MVP uh, in this release. Yeah, I, I think we've been sort of learning as we've been going here. So for example, Jacob mentioned the, the split of, of, of concerns of extracting data to, to loading data into a data warehouse. You know, for example, our current data warehouse is, uh, we found wasn't going to scale to some of the needs of the company. Uh, and so we've, um, we're like, oh, we should probably split these two things out so it's easier to continue to add additional sources. And the same thing goes um, as, as we get along here and learn, for example, about some data sources that have uh, very uh, low limits on how much you can pull from them. And so you need to sort of uh, have a method to pull small bits over time and have a way to like configure um, like backfill and things like that. And, and so we're kind of learning about some of these needs and um, essentially uh, as we've been designing, uh, you know, the first extractor was very basic and as we've been going, we've been sort of learning new, new features and new requirements and, and, and a better ways to do these things. And so we've been getting better and better and better um, with each one as we've been going. I think, I think the feature that I'm, um excited about and, and the one that I tell people about the most um, kind of is the review app feature on, on different branches. So currently what we're doing is whenever you push a new branch to the project, you actually, it'll create a clone of the data warehouse. Um, and so you'll have your own instance of the data warehouse to, to go in, you can add tables, delete schemas, mess up the data, do whatever you want. Um, and once kind of the, the pipeline passes, you can merge that into the production branch and then your job will run on production. Um, and it's kind of a, you know, something that's pretty standard, I think, in the software development world. But the idea that you would kind of have your own safe data set to play with um, is, is relatively new. And I, I think the other big feature is we use GitLab CI as the orchestration tool. So state of the art right now is a tool called Airflow um, for running your data pipelines, moving data, transforming it, um, and, and running different summary statistics on it. Uh, but we're actually using um, GitLab CI and kind of pushing it to its limits to see um, you know, where it needs some work for kind of data people. Um, but there's other ways where it's, it's I think, better probably than, than airflow in terms of uh, frequency and, and just being able to trigger it uh, based on, you know, different code changes. So those are, those are the things that I'm, I get really excited about. And, and the cool thing is, is that now that we're like battle testing uh, GitLab CI and figuring out how we want to integrate it directly into our tool, then we say like, okay, GitLab CI doesn't have this feature or it needs this feature or maybe it has all the features but the UI just doesn't explain it uh, as well as we'd like, then we can, uh, you know, actually make contributions to GitLab CI. Did we lose Jacob? No, I'm here. Okay. Um, awesome. Thanks. Sorry. I think, I think we caught the end of your thought. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. The, the idea is that we make contributions to uh, GitLab CI and, uh, and, and then, you know, those would go upstream and those would actually be a contribution to GitLab itself, um, you know, to make GitLab the product better as well. Very cool. And that actually reminds me of something else that's interesting. I think I got ahead of myself, but that um, the, I, I think if I'm correct, like this idea arose because we were trying to solve a problem that GitLab had internally, which is that it's a lot harder to understand marketing and sales data. And so um, I wondered if anyone could, who was more involved in that could explain um, just how that came about, because I just think it's interesting that a lot of organizations will um, have sympathy. <laughs> Yeah, I can, uh, I can take a stab at that. Um, so with regards to a different perspective, like I, I'm focused more on like trying to figure out business decisions. So, um, you know, a, a simple example would be like, you know, are we losing money? Are we making money? That's pretty straightforward. Um, but it's a really, it's, it's surprisingly difficult to be able to answer those questions um, efficiently. Uh, and when you start getting into more detailed level, it becomes even more difficult to answer those questions. Um, so what, I, what I'm really excited about uh, from the Meltano team is to be able to have uh, a solution that I can make a business decision uh, really quickly. So um, to kind of simplify this, if, if my house is too warm and I need to, to figure out how to um, cool it, all I have to do is go to the thermostat and turn it down. 
that's it. A business decision should be as simple as that. And unfortunately it's not. Um, so that's what really gets me excited about what the team is doing. I think one of the things I'm super excited about is just making these tools available uh, to everyone. And because like right now, you know, first of all, you don't have this complete picture. Um, and I think we're gonna make it a lot easier to digest, especially for um, even people who are new to data analytics, it's gonna be like, well, this is this one thing that does all the things you need. And then also, you know, um, being able to like let everybody use it at once um, versus you know only being able to really have like 30 people on it because for whatever reasons maybe it's too expensive or something like that and yeah I, I think another really important thing for me is is to hopefully try and make these sorts of analytics more accessible to people um, like at my you know in a, in a past life and what I've heard from others is that trying to hook up just some examples of like Marketo to Salesforce to understand, you know, how a, a marketing campaign or a conference you attended or something like that, you know, you, you invested X amount of money. Um, was it worthwhile? Uh, is, is a pretty common question to ask and um, to try and wire this all up yourself um, and to get things talking to each other is, is non-trivial. Um, and I, I think uh, anything we can do to make that easier for companies and for users to try and um, make better use of their data um, it is a great win. So hopefully we can accomplish that with with Meltano uh, here um, and um, really kind of reduce the initial friction of, of getting some of this data uh, and some of these really insights out of, out of your own data you're getting from these tools. There are whole swaths of small and medium-sized businesses that don't have access to data analytics because they don't have engineers on their team. They don't have um, uh, the reports that they get are the reports they're getting from whatever tool they're using, whether that's Marketo or Salesforce or Shopify or whatever the backend tool they're using is. And so the problem is that when they're dependent on these like siloed data sources, they can't do anything cross-functionally. So if you run a giveaway and you get all these new email signups and they're piping into MailChimp and you want to know if those users are buying things in Shopify, if there's not some sort of native integration, you don't know, and you can't relate that data to any other data source. I think Meltano, especially as an open source project, can make it really easy for all of these companies that don't have a ton of money to invest in data analytics, which is a new field to a lot of organizations. They will finally have access to the data through um, you know, the cost difference that Meltano can be to them. That's so awesome to hear. Um, and so it was great. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about how the vision is that this will be an open source tool as well. Um, so I'm just curious on behalf of our um, readers and viewers, are you able to accept contributions um, already? And um, are there any like types of contributions that you're most you know, in need of or prioritizing right now? We are absolutely um, open source right now, and you can read all the issues and you can look at all the development that's currently happening. Um, we just put out uh, our plan for an MVC. So if you're, if you're open and willing to help us uh, get to that MVC, uh, then, that is, uh, then that's the next step for us. Um, but currently we have a plan um, to, uh, to get from um, zero to uh, an, M an, MV an MVP. MVP um, and and all contributions are open and we have uh, many places that you can contribute um, because uh, we have Meltano analysis which is the UI that's on top of everything we have the extractors which are individual uh, extractors that we write in a certain way you can look at the fastly extractor as an example and then we have the loaders currently we're only supporting Postgres uh, but we are going to need to support many different um, database types uh, that especially data analytics people use like Redshift and BigQuery and stuff like that. So if you want to write um, a loader for those, that would be amazing. We're going to do it eventually, but if you want to do it before that, fantastic. And um, and and many other things as well. Awesome. Um, and so we might wrap up a few minutes early, but I wanted to um, give you all the opportunity. Is there just anything else you'd want, kind of your peers? Um, data scientists, um, other like types of users, like anyone else, what it, is there anything else you'd want them to know about Meltano and the work that you're doing? 
I would just also say that um, the development of Meltano is all done in Python. The uh, front end is done with Flask and the uh, JavaScript is written with Vue with Vuex. Uh, so if you're a Vue aficionado like myself uh, and you love to write Vue like I do, then uh, it's a really, really cool project to contribute to because um, you're doing a lot of charts and a lot of really cool data visualization stuff that you don't get to do on your basic CRUD application. I would put in a plug kind of for the, the analytics team. So our primary um, analytics project is in the, the Meltano namespace. Um, it's right now it's Meltano uh, analytics. Um, and we're, you know, we, we use Meltano, but we're also kind of off scrolled away doing our own things to, um, to, to meet kind of the business objectives. Um, but since everything's kind of out in the open, all of our database transformations, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that we're doing is, is, is right there um, out in the open. What I would ask of the community is, is like, help us think about these things. You know, there's, we, we know that some aspects of how we do analytics, how we do data science um, is not where it should be. It doesn't, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't have the same uh, level of process um, and stability around um, like software development does, like with Git and merge requests and things like that. Um, help us think about this stuff. Uh, you know, I, I think blog posts will be great to kind of get some of that feedback. Um, but, you know, if, you don't think we're using the right primitives or we're going about it the wrong way like we're all ears we want to do we want to be world-class uh at, at this both on the, the meltano of the product and also like the internal data analytics team we want to be world-class in what we do so we're, we're all ears and same for the meltano team as well if if you look at the tool and you say it would be really great if it did this feature requests start sending feature requests we'd love to hear them where Taylor and Jacob, where do you want that in issues? Should people submit those sort of requests right in issues? Should they? Everything's an issue. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna make a. Um, and there's the Meltano group and the Meltano project, uh, which is a giant mono repo right now, which is uh, the big plan for the future. Right now, I'm gonna go make a a label called feature requests. If you want to make a feature request and tag it. Awesome. If there's nothing else, then um, thank you all so much again for joining. Um, I'm going to drop everyone's uh, links to everyone's bios and social and everything at the bottom of the blog post so people can get in touch that way too. Um, but otherwise, um, this has been an awesome first session. I'm glad we all got to introduce the Meltano team a little bit uh, to, our, to our readers. So I hope everyone has a great rest of your day and thanks for joining. Thanks, Emily. Bye.